Hey guys, Todd back again for a quick update here on Freedom Steel, former NRA contract lobbyist, Illinois gun law guru. So, uh, several things. Uh, today, good news. The case uh, of FFL Illinois was transferred to Judge McGlynn's docket. So, in the beginning, SAF had filed the suit and it landed in front of Judge McGlynn. FFL Illinois and its plaintiffs along with NSSF uh, had filed suits and they were referred to Judge Gilbert. Then uh, the Attorney General motioned to have a state court action filed by lawyer Thomas Mag removed to the federal court. That happened right in front of our case filings. So the order of the cases in terms of numbering was SAF, the MAG case, NSSF, and then FFL Illinois. So with that, NR SF SAF was the low numbered case. The Attorney General attempted to jump that in some judge shopping, and when our case and the MAG case landed in front of a different judge in East St. Louis. They tried to get all the cases consolidated there. Today, the chief judge, who was the judge that the case landed in front of, followed district precedent and sent all the cases back to the low numbered case, which was the SAF case, and thus we are in front of Judge McGlynn, a Trump appointee. Uh, which we think um, his judicial views probably are more in sync with what we're thinking about. So those are in the Southern District. We have a bevy of news. Naperville, uh, there was a motion Friday afternoon and a hearing for a TRO. We are waiting to see what the judge rules on that TRO in the Naperville case. Uh, it has started to implicate state law, so there's a bevy of things going on there. Uh, just to give you a rundown, you have the SAF case, you have the MAG case, you have FFL Illinois case, the NSF case, you have Naperville, you have the ongoing uh, ISRA challenge to Cook County, you have the National Association for Gun Rights challenge to Highland Park, you have a new case filed challenging the state law, Cook County, and Chicago in a case called Herrera. Then you have Miller v. Walker, which is the challenge on prohibition on firearms and foster homes and daycare, home daycare centers. And then you've got the challenge to Illinois' ban on suppressors. Those are all federal court cases. State court cases, you've got the main case that was removed to federal court. You got DeVore number one, DeVore number two, uh, filed in Effingham and White counties. You got Representative Calkins case filed in Macon County. You have the McHenry County State's Attorney challenging the act which has now been removed to federal court in the Western District of the Northern part of the court. You have the GSL Floyd card case in Sagamon County. Then you have my case challenging the Cook County ammo tax in Cook County. Um, those are all the cases that I can think of off the top of my head that we are tracking. And so with that, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, the McHenry County case today was transferred to federal court. Uh, we'll see what the judge draw on that one looks like, and we'll go from there. Uh, Kwame Raul's office is going to be very, very busy. I would wager to say that they are going to start asking for delays in filing their responses and extensions out the wazoo to try to keep up with all this stuff. Uh, so good news for us today. Uh, we're back in front of what we think is going to be a judge that will give us a fair shake. Uh, along with that, in my last video, I talked about state police confiscating some firearms. So I was given information about an individual who had two firearms over the course of a couple of days this weekend and several blogs. Uh, we now are hearing about a second case. It was posted up on Reddit. 
the guy's brother-in-law was sitting there posting about it, saying that state police had come to his house. According to this Reddit post, his wife said he wasn't home uh, and told them no dice. And the guy came home, and while the state police were still in the area, and they asked him about the gun, and it seems that he had bought a firearm, a single firearm, and uh, it was confiscated by the state police. Now, it appears that there was a gun shop in the Rockford area that was sitting there openly flaunting that they were going to continue selling firearms, according to some posts that I have heard about from social media, that they were out there openly saying, we're selling guns. And so what it appears to have happened is that the state police got wind of this one way or another. They may have gone to that gun shop, pulled records uh, for violation of the state law, because it is the state law right now, and then turned around and backtracked those 4473s with those guns to the people that bought them in contravention to the current law, uh, and then sought to confiscate those firearms. Uh, it doesn't appear they got warrants, and it does appear that uh, the state police have issued a statement to at least one press individual. Let me see if I can get this so I can get this up here. The state police issued this statement. Got this statement. Let's see. This is from uh, Greg Bishop. So he contacted me. Earlier this month, ISP took enforcement action against a business for openly advertising the sale of banned weapons. The investigation is ongoing and additional information is not available at that time. So what I had thought happened, happened. Uh, state police were made aware of it and then they went and took action. So no idea where that's going to lead. Somebody made a foolish mistake and is now going to be paying for that because even if you uh, beat the rap at the end of the day. It's going to cost you a lot of money in attorney's fees. So um, working on some uh, pleadings with lawyers and uh, discussing cases and trying to keep track of all this silliness that's going on around here. Uh, hoping to hear if uh, uh, Law Weapons uh, gets their TRO sometime soon. Could be as early as tomorrow. Uh, and we'll just keep knocking on this door. So with that, guys, that's a little, that's just a short update on where we are as we get more stuff. Uh, we still have a bunch of filings from the Attorney General and the Anti-Gunners to go through and more uh, videos. Just finding time between wrangling all the stuff for these lawsuits is, is just time consuming. So, as always, thank you very much for watching and sharing our videos. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Uh, copy and paste this link to all the social media sites that you have around to let people know what's going on. And uh, with that, as always, frag out.